beauties of the Linux desktop board is that you have everything all the way from A to Z or Z, whether it's Arch Linux or Zorin OS. At one end, you have Arch Linux where you have to install everything almost from scratch. And then you have Zorin OS where you get a very well packaged distribution where you can get a start as soon as you install it. I must admit that I have not used Zorin OS as my primary distribution. I use Arch Linux and OpenSUSE, but Zorin OS is a distribution that I always uh, keep close to my heart whenever it comes to recommending it to Linux, <laughs> not Linux, but Windows or Mac OS users. Now, it's a totally different question. Why would a Mac OS or a Windows user want to migrate to Linux? Um, we'll talk about that maybe in some time later, but if you are planning to migrate, then Zorin OS is a great distribution. Or if you are an average Linux user and you want a distribution or an operating system which is very well polished, then Zorin OS is the right distribution for you. Now, unlike Windows and Mac OS, you don't get Linux based distributions pre-installed on you know, the premium hardware that you can get in the market. You cannot just walk into a Best Buy or Target, or you can order it from Amazon.com. Uh, there are companies like System76, Zerism, and uh, Purism, which offer Linux-based laptops. But, you know, that's you know one set of hardware. But if you want to go out and buy you know, Dell, actually Dell comes with Ubuntu. But the point is that not every hardware that you're looking for comes with Linux pre-installed. So you have to go through the installation process. And this is something that can be a deal maker or a deal breaker. If it is really hard to install an operating system or your machine, you will not go through the whole process and you would go to something which is simpler and easier or something which comes pre-installed. And that's where Zorin OS shines because it's very easy to install. I installed it on my system and it took me under five to six minutes to install the whole distribution. Of course, it depends on uh, your hard drive, your RAM, and the USB that you're using to install it. If you're using a very old USB 2.0 or something like that, of course, the transfer speed is slow, so it will take longer. If you're, you're, you're using an old hard drive with less than 5200 RPM, of course, it will be slow. I am using, you know, uh, not only just IS, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> I, I'm not only using SSD, but it's PCI Express SSD, and I have 32 gig of RAM on this machine, and the latest processor, so everything was smooth and fine. Now, once the installation process is done, the second stage, or the second you know, step is the first interaction with the distribution. So let's open it up and see. And here you go. Of course, I changed the wallpaper, and if you're spending too much time on looking at the wallpaper, you're using your system for the wrong reasons. Here you go. It's, it looks more or less like Windows 10, to be honest with you. But look, just, 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 just take a moment and look at it. It looks so beautiful. One of the issues that I have with most Linux-based distributions is that they don't focus on look and feel. And I think that look and feel is really important. There are certain distributions that take a lot of pain to do it right. Of course, elementary OS is one of the best distributions out there that is known for being the most polished distributions. They have paid a lot of you know attention and thought to it. Pop OS is also good. And Zorin OS, that also shines, that is one of the most beautiful distributions. Uh, when it comes to the main student distribution among you know Debian, Fedora, and OpenSUSE, OpenSUSE does incredible job at integrating uh, the whole desktop environment with the operating system itself, and it looks beautiful out of the box. That's one of the most uh, beautiful you know mainstream distribution out there the user experience is really important if you go to watch a movie you sit in a theater and you want to sit in a recliner with a with some popcorn and coke and soda and enjoy the movie on imax or what imax right a screen like massive screen just imagine the experience where there's a chaos on the ticket line. You cannot buy tickets online. You have to stand in a big chaotic, it's, there is no line. You have to just struggle with each other to just get a ticket and you may not even get tickets next to each other. Then there is uh, no clear where to get soda or popcorn. You have, once again, you have to fight to get popcorn and soda and they all only take cash. So you have to carry some cash and then you're running out of 
uh, changes then there is no seat adoptment you have to just struggle to find the seat next to each other or you have to argue with other you know customers hey can we sit together and then seats are all creaky and broken the screen is uh, not good movie is great you're going to watch infinity war but a screen is also not good sound is not good so the the whole user experience is bad the movie is good will you enjoy it no would you sit in a chair which is not very comfortable we are you know you're, 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 you just have to sit and write a story so why should you care about the chair but my point is that you know the user experience really matters same is the case with computers like I really care about the font that I use to write my story. Actually, I I set up the light, I, I, I set up some music, and then I fire up an application with the right font when I work on my novel. The, the environment, the ambience is really important for me. That's why people go and sit and relax in parks. I mean, of course, in the US, we are always rushing, so we don't take a moment to actually sit down and relax. But I, when I lived in Belgium, you know, you'll see, you know, the people, they go in the park, they, that's the whole concept of picnic came from French. They go sit in the park, bring a sandwich and wine, they put a sheet, open the basket, take the sandwich out, sit, sit with their loved ones and just enjoy in the sun, you know, you, they enjoy life. We never get a chance to enjoy life here in the U.S. <laughs> Same is with most of the distribution. They are chaotic, like the movie theater that I told you about. But Zorin OS is like Belgian Park. You enjoy it. And you can see it right in front of my eyes. Anyway, so <laughs> it was, it's, just a, it's just a launcher, just a menu. Let's actually go inside the system and see how things look in there. So let's open settings. And as you can see, everything is neatly organized. Personal hardware system. I was struggling with, uh, with, with a lot of distribution that, that, that come with GNOME or even in the, some case of Plasma. I was playing with Linux Mint and it was impossible to find display it was buried under general settings well it's hardware just show it in front of me because there are certain things that we need access immediately especially if you're using a linux based distribution on a high dpi system the first thing you want to do is configure the scaling right otherwise everything is either too small or too big but zorin os everything scales very well as you can see right here everything looks neat and beautiful I want Bluetooth, it's there. Display, it's there. Keyboards, there. Networks, there. Power settings, there. Theme, there. Everything that you want is there. I love it. And you can see, look and feel. It's very polished. It's as polished as Mac OS. Actually, Windows 10 is also starting to look good these days. So, <clears throat> Uh, let, let's look at the application that I use. So the first thing that I do, it could be you know different in your case, is I fire up a browser. Uh, because without internet, what are you going to do on your system, right? Unless and until you're J.R. Martin, so you may be using, what is your word star, I think, right? To, to write uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, I mean, that's what I do when I'm working on a novel. I don't need a browser, I just have to sit down and write. But the first thing you do is a browser. So let's see what browsers they have. So it comes with Chromium. Uh, by default, most Linux distribution choose Chromium instead of Chrome. But the problem with the Chromium is that um, if you want to do things like Netflix, it doesn't come with uh, the DRM tool, which allows you to watch any movie. So for example, I want to watch it and it throws this page. I cannot watch it. If it was Firefox, maybe I will be because Firefox on Linux offers Additional option to do that, but you have to enable it on Mac OS and Windows. It comes by default. So yes, Chromium is good for you know Google Docs and everything else, but I cannot watch movies on Amazon Prime or Netflix using it. So I will need some other browser, which would be Chrome and Firefox. But let's look at the other use case, which is text editor. And this is, I'm guessing, gedit. Right, it's GEDIT version 3.18.3. .3. And look at the implementation and theme. It looks so beautiful. It's minimalistic because when I'm looking at a, at a text editor, I don't want to see all the nonsense of buttons and brow, you know. I just want to see plain white paper where I can start writing stories. Actually, one of the reasons I love macOS is the 
full screen zoom support because when you click on that option everything else disappear all you see is that user space for your application so when i'm writing on on any text editor on other than windows uh, no not windows microsoft office everything else disappears i use uh, sublime text and i also use ulysses on mac the reason i use sublime text is it's cross platform we'll talk about that later then everything else disappears all you see is a white paper and your text on linux i think kd does support full screen but it's a, a, a bit of work but here you see all you see is white screen and you can start writing i love it so my second use case is a text editor that's taken care of the third thing that i do is rss feed reader actually i have moved to feedly because feedly makes it very easy to keep a track tab on all the sites and google alerts for news um, on mac os feedly comes as an application so i can very easily install it and work on it without relying on a web browser uh, the another thing that i use is TweetDeck so that i can you know promote my stories on all the tweet, uh, twitter platforms uh, that's pretty much that i do on linux machine as i have been very transparent that i use all three platforms i use windows 10 i use mac os and i use windows because i do a lot of filmmaking actually i'll be editing this video also on a mac os machine because i shoot in 4k and this is just solo camera but other uh, recording that i do especially the videos i use three cameras and uh, there is no way on the linux based um, at, uh, video editing software which can handle three uh, video uh, uh, footage and two microphone footage uh, uh, fcp x which is final Cut pro x and adobe premiere they both support multicam where i can put all the clips together and very easily edit i'll talk about that later uh, Windows had its own advantages, Mac OS has its own advantages, and Linux has its own advantages. So what I do is I use the right tool for the right job. Uh, for my writing work and web browsing, I mostly use Linux. So these are the three or four use cases that I told you, and Zorin OS is able to handle them. But as I said, you know, I need different applications. So let's see how to install Chrome on Zorin. Can I do it from the software manager so do they have any software manager there software so i think they're using gnome software manager there yes and uh, let's see what is it about it is software yeah it's gnome so let's see if they have chrome there oh uh, and uh, no it's not there no surprises none of the linux distribution offer chrome do they have firefox yes so let's install Fi so they have quantum as well as the good old firefox so let's install and i have to enter my password so i'm installing firefox now let's see if they have tweet deck there but there may be other clients which can handle such kind of workload exactly and they are there oh uh, i need to install chrome why because i also use google docs to write my story which i can share with my editors because it's make it easier and uh, chrome works better with a lot of shortcuts on google docs so let's because zorin os is a debian based ubuntu based distribution so we have to install 64-bit package there there should be a ppa that i can easily add so that i can keep it updated all the time so I simply downloaded Chromium, just like you would do on Windows Word, double click on it, and it is going to install it now. It did not, okay, I was waiting for the password. It asked for my password, and I'm all set to install Chromium. It's installed, it's a matter of seconds. Now, while writing, I did not mention uh, LibreOffice. Usually I do all my work in Sublime Text and save all my file in DocText file. The reason is that I have been burned before where both LibreOffice and Microsoft Office corrupted my files. So I actually lost one of my short stories that I was writing. After that, I decided I will not save my files in any of these formats because I move between platforms. So now I save all of my work in DocText file. When I do need 
to, of course, you know, you will be doing formatting or when I'm sending it, then I use either LibreOffice or Pages or uh, Microsoft Word, and then I save it in doc, doc, docx format and send it. I used to use ODT, but there's a lot of interoperability issues, so I just make everything easier and use it. Uh, the reason I use LibreOffice is because it's available on all three platforms, so it doesn't really matter whether I'm on Mac or Windows or Linux, I can use it and get the work done. But sometime when I'm creating some creative work, uh, then I Pages is does a good job, so I can use Pages. And then I, of course, you know, use Google Docs for it. So let's say LibreOffice here. So you can open LibreOffice. And here's a beautiful LibreOffice. They have done a very good job at theme and layout and presentation. Uh, this is good. Uh, which version of LibreOffice are they using? I'm sure they are using an old, yes, it's 5.1.62 because uh, it's not a rolling release distribution. I'll see, you know, what kind of version I can get here. So I think Chrome is installed. So let's open Chrome and see if I can play I'll make a default browser if I can play. A lot of people have problems with Google. I don't, because here's the thing. If you're a smart user, you're safe everywhere. If you're a dumb user, even if I give you a tank, it won't protect you because you will sit in a tank and leave the doors unlocked or you will hand over the keys to everyone else. So. There is nothing fool, you know, foolproof. If you're a fool, even Linux will not protect you. And then Linux is not meant as a distribution that is designed to protect you. Uh, it, it's it's not uh, uh, designed as a secure <laughs> OS. It's uh, an it's an OS. Actually, Linux is just a kernel, but. It's an OS that can be used in different use cases depending on who is using it. So if you want security, you can use Tails OS. But even on Tails OS, if you log into a social networking account, it, 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 it's not going to work. So let's see. OK, uh, let's try to play something on Netflix. And it's playing. That is why I tend to use Chrome. Because the thing is that I said you know, uh, earlier that I, I I use computer as a tool to get work done. I don't want to spend time in fixing things because my time is precious. Uh, there was a time in my life where I had a lot of free time where I can sit for hours in just fixing things. But now I have to do five or six story. I have to record videos. I have to travel. So I want, I have 10 minutes to do work on something. I'll just do it and get done. I don't have 20 minutes to fix it. So I use the tools that work and on Linux, I can use Chrome and start doing the work. Well, it's not work, it's entertainment, but well, that, that's the point is that you can do whatever you want to do very easily. So that was installing Chrome, and that also showed you that how easy it is to install third-party applications which may not be available uh, in the software center. Just one click, just like Mac OS and Windows. But if you want to install something which is available in the software center, then you can install it very easily as I gave you the example of. Firefox. Now, how to update the system? Let's have a look at update mechanism. A software update, software and updates. Why are there two things? So what is software updater? Checking, so software updater is just a tool which checks if there are any updates available for your system. And what is software and updates? Okay, software and updates. So here's the difference, software updater runs the tool, looks for all the updates available and offers you an option to update it. Software and update is a tool that allows you to manage repositories, how the updates are involved, uh, 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 you know, installed, what kind of updates are in, installed. In the developer option, you can very easily click on this pre-release updates, which will install, you know, the proposed packages. And if you're thinking about, hey, this is Daniel, Okay, don't get confused about the naming. Zorin 12 is based on Ubuntu 16.4, which was the LTS release. The next LTS release of Ubuntu is 18.4, which is already out. And the next version of Zorin OS, 
will be based on Ubuntu 18.4 and that version will be released in autumn. So you should be, uh, you know, getting excited about the next version of Zorin. So here you can manage all those things. You can also add PPA if you want, though there is no mechanism to search for PPA. I wish uh, that this uh, Zorin might have been able to somehow find a way where users can search for the PPA from the distributor itself because it's kind of counterproductive where I have to go search for the PPA of a particular application and then add it. That would have made life easier. And that would be my suggestion to the developers. Now, the software updater, as I said, you know, you can click on it and install the packages. What kind of packages are there? Complete generic Linux and uh, so all those LibreOffice. Which version of LibreOffice is going to be installed? It will also update Zorin OS base. Uh, it's not showing me the version of LibreOffice here, but I'll just hit on the install button and see how long it takes to install everything here. I have to give the password, of course and then it is installing everything it's very fast i have one gigabit uh, speed from fios so things will be installed very quickly uh, one more app which is lifeline for me is email client and uh, calendar and contacts zorin comes with the geary gmail email client and let's log into my email and see if i can do it I'm sure I entered my password wrong. Let's see. Okay, it's, it's, it's fine, it worked. So it's a beautiful, it's my personal email, but it's a beautiful email client. Uh, what I have to see is, does it work with calendar and contact? Because that is really important for me. So I opening the calendar and uh, I clicked on the synchronize button. but uh, it's not synchronizing. I don't know because there's no option to set the account with which I want to synchronize. Contact, online account. Okay, this can be troublesome and that is why I really like Mac OS and Windows because on Mac OS I love it because once you set a, a, a set up an account whether it's uh, calendar contacts email notes you can sync all of it together so I don't have to go and do it separately in the Linux world I really love evolution which is gnomes email client because it integrates all these three together so when you set up an evolution email client you can work with the, it, it automatically set up account for calendar and contacts. But there's an option of online account because it is GNOME. So let's see what happens if I set up an online account. Though Gary should have done that for me. So you have to do a lot of work manually to get things done. Though you may also say that, oh, it's one time thing. Yes, but just because one time thing doesn't mean it should be a painful process. You go and shop one time in a store. Let's say you're traveling to San Francisco and you are just going to shop for one time. Does that mean it has to be a painful process? No, it doesn't really matter whether you are there for first time or the last time. You can easily walk in there, shop and walk out. So it's talking about uh, evolution data server, evolution data server, okay, grant access and uh, I have given please authorize Ubuntu to access your Google account. The problem is that I don't see any authorization tab here. Okay, I have authorized it again. And now Gmail is on. Let's see if I can access contact now. Okay, now all contacts are showing and here is Ed and Seagull. So contacts are there. Let's see calendar. Calendar is not populating yet. I have clicked on the sync account my calendars are usually online account though there is no integrate your IM account so it, it integrates with the 
Yes, empathy. So I can start chatting. Once again, Aaron Sego is there. I can chatting using Gmail, uh, Google Hangout. But calendar is still not working. And that is why I prefer evolution. So we can simply go to software and install evolution. Though I don't know if I can install right now because I'm updating. That will another test. Evolution install. It should ask password. And here we go. And evolution is installed. And let's uh, next. Why do I have to give my email address again when I have already entered it in? online settings it should not ask me to do all of that again it should just am i doing something wrong here let me see the software again and to make sure that install evolution is installed properly evolution no it's not installed so which evolution is that why is it not showing me i don't understand why I can't install evolution here for some reason I'm not able to install evolution here oh install but it was not showing there okay so it is installed evolution mail and as usual it is asking me to set up my account which should not be the case because as I said, I already configured my account in, okay. So evolution is all configured. Let's say calendar now. Okay, so the, the default calendar is still not working. I have to go to evolution calendar, which should work properly and it is populating good. So this is why uh, you should use evolution if you really rely on calendar and contacts and mail for your system and I, I don't know why other uh, I think Katie's Kmail is getting better at that but I don't understand all these email clients I don't think they have any idea what actual users use the professionals I mean of course uh, the ordinary users they don't need an email client they can just open the client in a web browser people who actually need a client are the one who use it in a professional capacity and those people do need access or integration with contact book and calendars. I'm not going to remember everybody's email address. So everybody who's writing email clients, please integrate calendar contacts with your email client. Okay, but that's not the fault of Zorin OS. I wish and uh, my, my advice to Zorin OS creators is please use evolution as the default email client instead of Geary and also if possible because you're also targeting at Windows 10 users so please offer Chrome or Firefox as the default web browser so that people can fire it up and start doing those kind of things that you want to do and also watch Netflix anyway so we we looked at the installation we looked at how to update software and uh, we also looked at the apps that I use and I can easily install whatever app I need uh, one more thing that is interesting is that there is a baked in support for wine uh, configure wine I have not used wine at all ever the reason that's why I use uh, <laughs> Windows as well and the reason is simple the applications that I use are mostly for professional work uh, the, the two or three application that I use uh, for work is number one is Adobe Premiere Suite uh, because I use it for film production and uh, there I need full access to CPU GPU RAM but when you're running it to wine or even in virtual machine you don't get access to the hundred percent hardware at all and here in this case you cannot run Adobe CC 
because it supports only Windows 7 nothing of its Windows 8 also but not Windows 10 and I will not run an application like that in, an, in, a, in either emulator or use wine for it because I will not be able to take advantage of my hardware plus the reason I also use Windows and Mac OS is driver support there are a lot of events for my uh, Panasonic camera I use a tethering app where I can plug it my camera to my laptop and I can uh, use it to control the camera or copy paste stuff which is not supported on Linux. I have a Samsung 360 camera. Once again, it's not supported on Linux. I have DJI drone, which once again is not supported on Linux. So that is why I moved to those platform because to me, the job is more important than a struggle to get it to get the work done. So even if I'm using wine, I will not be able to access that hardware because that is not supported at the kernel level. Uh, so wine is good for a lot of use cases we are using some some legacy obsolete application and you need it only once a year that may work but uh, for other use cases it will not work and no i'm sorry uh, but it will not work for games also uh, i will talk about those topics later but what is really good is that since wine support and i think there are other um, like play on linux um, which is I think for games or I have no idea what this is because I've never used it uh, let's see what is it play on Linux about play on Linux yeah so you can run your Windows programs on Linux let's for the sake of fun let's see if I can run this program on Linux Chrome Windows <clears throat> Now here is the problem. Why can't I choose which version other platforms? Okay, and let's say Windows 10 64 bit. So I am downloading it and let's see if I can install that using. Okay, I can't do that. Install non listed program. Play on Linux. Next, next. Cannot even see the whole window here. I may have to make it bigger. Next. Okay. Next. In a new virtual drive. So it will create a virtual drive there, play on Linux. Is it running a virtual machine there? Well, the problem is virtual machines have their own. There is some error in Wine. I cannot do that. So let's close it. Let's go to and see if what happens if I right click on on it does it offer any open with other application wine program loader let's see if i can install it might be able to install chrome using wine we'll see anyway uh, while we are running i don't want to waste your time but the point is that if there is some kind of application legacy application that you still want to run on linux then wine may help you and which is kind of neat Though in my case it will not work because the application that I need are mostly you know subscription based all the time updated ones and they won't run it. Uh, so we have gone through the installation process. We have had a look at you know how it looks and feel. We try to install the application that I need for my work. We had a look at you know the pre-install applications. And honestly speaking, it looks really neat so far. Uh, unable to connect to the internet if you use firewall so uh, it, as i said you know just because it's wine doesn't mean it's very easy to use it can be a lot of troublesome uh, and uh, i would not bother with that that's why i <laughs> move to to other platforms but that's not a deal breaker because it's it's you know extra support that you can get for some windows application that you still rely on and you know what i think i will talk about uh, I will do a dedicated show just to talk about whether you should use Linux or not and, and what are the use cases where you should move to Linux and what are the use cases where you should, you should still stick to Windows or what are the use cases where you can still use Wine or a virtual machine. But that will be a different topic. Uh, I would like to now conclude this uh, video uh, and, and I think that Zorin OS is a really great distribution. One of the beauties of Zorin OS is that it is designed so well 
when you use it, you feel good. And that is really important, you know. In our lives, we need to be, you know, using t tools that make us feel good, you know. You want to sit in a clean, tidy room. You want to sit in a nice chair, you know. So, so those things cannot be ignored or negated. I hope the focus in my face because last time the mic was confusing the autofocus on the camera. Anyway, and that's why, you know, the camera, the, the, the mic also matters that it should look good. Um, so, so I think Zorin OS hits some points very well and that's what I love. Number one is ease of installation. Number two is ease of use. Number three is look and feel, which is really critical. Number four is ability to run legacy Windows applications. And number five is that it's very stable, uh, very durable uh, distribution that is based on Ubuntu LTS release. So you don't have to worry about things breaking. And they also keep a gap between releases. So you use a very stable version without having to worry about too many things. Plus, the beauty of Zorin OS is a lot of other distributions out there, they are suffering from not invented here syndrome. They try to reinvent the wheel every time. They will rewrite software manager. They will rewrite um, text editor. They will rewrite every single piece there and waste a lot of resources. Whereas it doesn't really change the user experience. In some cases, it actually ruins it. And that wastes time, it wastes resources, and it also kind of um, ruins the image of Linux on desktop. It does work for those developers, but it doesn't work for everyone else. And that is why I'm very picky when it comes to an operating system. That's why I use R Linux because they don't do much of their own forking. Uh, OpenSUSE, they are one of the top Linux companies and communities out there, which are actually part of upstream. So the work they do is being used by the rest of us or other distributions. Um, I use Debian on my server. But I don't use a lot of derivatives out there because they just waste a lot of resources. But what Zorin does is, as you saw, that they are using all upstream packages with fine tuning them. Just look at, I mean, they have used a particular theme, they have done some polishing, and that is what you're supposed to be doing. You defy the whole point of open source if you are forking everything and reinventing everything. You should take the code and add value on top of it, not rewrite the whole code, because then you also don't help upstream of that project. So I think Zorin OS is one of the best distributions out there because it checks all the marks that I have there for, for a Linux-based distribution. They don't play dirty with Firefox or Google search. Uh, they don't fork everything so that <laughs> they get some kind of gratification out of it. They take Linux, Ubuntu, and they make a distribution that solves a particular problem. As you saw there, I can fire up the uh, operating system and start doing the work without fiddling with a lot of things. And that is the whole point. You, you, you need to understand that it really doesn't matter whether you are using open source underneath or whether you respect privacy. What really matters is, are you really solving the problem of a user? Are you offering a product that helps me, that make my life easier, that helps me in, in, in using my computer better? If not, then it, none of it matters. But, and that's exactly what distribution like Zorin OS do. They make it really easy to use Linux. And that is why Zorin OS is going to be in the list of my most recommended operating systems of 2018. That was my kind of long review of Zorin OS. Please let me know what you think about it. Uh, if you use Zorin OS, why do you use it? If you don't use it, why you don't use it? What are the things that you think can be improved in it? And also tell us what are the things that you love about it? And uh, also suggest a topic for my next video. Uh, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye for now. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And as you all know that my content heavily relies on Patreon. So please, if you love this video, please consider becoming Patreon. On Patreon, I'll put the links below. And I am planning to do at least one video per week where I focus on Linux and open source. Now, now you can go.
Thanks for watching.